so you know who we play. And yes, we're a little bit late. I know it came out last week, but still, we're going to do it the Anvil way. Sammy, go ahead and bang that. Turn up your volume. Because you're about to listen to The Sick Podcast. The Sick Podcast. And Bill Show. The sickest Indianapolis Colts podcast. It's going to be sick. Sick, sick, sick. Yes, sir. It's going to be sick. Welcome to another sick podcast, Anvil Show Edition. Pat, come on in. Let's talk about the schedule release. What's up, big fella? What's happening, Bubba? Yes, sir. Did you, get your, did you get your daughter all squared away? I did get my daughter all squared away. I cried Looks a little sophomore bit. Sophomore at Purdue now. Ooh, proud sophomore. Papa moment. Yeah, I got Good her job, own place. Papa. Oh, oh, thank you. Let me. Oh no, that's the wrong one. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I need yeah, to but... get you a label maker for all the buttons you got. I know. Clyde did cry though. I will say that. Uh, that was. Uh, was it? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Absolutely. It, but. You can be the toughest, soft. strongest man in the world, but you're, you're still human. You're still going to have emotions, and having those emotions are okay. It doesn't mm. make you weak. It means you got a big heart. Mm. That's what I like <laughs> about you, brother. And with that, let's go ahead and bang that bitch. <laughs> God, I can barely hear that. You didn't hear that tonight? I, ba- I mean, barely. Oh, I heard it loud and clear. Well, Sammy, go ahead and bring up those predictions, please. Jumping right in. It's going to be a good night. Okay, well, first and foremost, got to love working with Sick. Sick does things like this. Amazing graphics where we've all compiled our thoughts on how our games will go this season. Unfortunately, um, Big Country's probably sunburnt and drunk somewhere. Yeah, it went to a baseball game, right? <laughs> yeah. So good. He may or may priorities not. Priorities on your responsibilities, young man. Yeah. I mean, we're not rolling the bus, but we're driving the bus. So um, with that said, let's just jump right into it, right? So what I've also done. I've brought up because um, I, I kind of follow what they write. Do you watch or follow Colts Wire at all, Pat? I do not. You do not. Okay. Well, I know you kind of follow Jake over at Sports Illustrated stuff like that. Jake but, uh, Arthur, I do follow. Absolutely, yes. Jake does great stuff. But I do. He, follow he really him. does, and he's a hell of a nice guy. If, you, if anybody out there ever gets a chance to see him at training camp or at a game, go ahead and talk to him. Introduce yourself. He's a yes. hell of a nice guy. Absolutely. And so what I was attempting to do is I wanted to get, I won't call him an expert, but I'll, I was trying to find someone um, who actually has, you know, a pretty good following um, to kind of look at how they saw the season going. So I, I pulled up a cold Swire USA Today um, article. And uh, yeah, so we're going to jump into their predictions and kind of go one by one with us. All right. All so. Right. Drum roll. All right, here we go. So week one, right? First and foremost, I start with week one. And if you've been a Colts fan as long as us, you know that we don't win in week one. (laughs) It's been, what, two decades since we had? No, it ain't been that long. Seems like it. Slow down. down. It ain't been that long. It's been about, uh, I think last year made eight years because technically (laughs) – we didn't win, but we didn't lose because we tied. That's true. <laughs> we won against the, the Houston Texans. So uh, we still have been on this we can't win week one streak. And lo and behold, we are playing the now division champs, the Jacks. And across the board, the Colts have win, win, win. Pat Acosta and myself. So, Pat, I'll let you start. Why do we beat the Jags? in week one, and we don't win at week one. Well, I got a question before I answer yours. No. Do you consider us not winning week one a curse? Mm, Like a lot of people say, yeah, that we got that week one curse. And they're saying that it's not broken because although a tie is not a loss, it's not a win. And you got to have a win to, to break the curse. What's your feelings on the whole curse thing, if you will? 
I, I don't know if I subscribe to curses, if you will. So maybe I've never looked at it like that. I just think that uh, we've been in a lot of close games week one, and then we've had other games where we just got smoked week one. I mean, there's a couple seasons ago, you know, we should have beat uh, – who was that? Nah, don't, even, don't get me to try to remember. But we've been in, in, in several close games in week one, but I think, you know, we just ain't getting over the hump. So I won't say that it's a curse. No curse. That's okay. my final. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't believe in the curse either. I just believe in yeah. good play, bad play, and right. we we have not come out the gate lately very strong. Very uh, and if you remember last year when we had Chris on, Chris Ballard, you know, I asked him that question. You know, what is it that you and and Coach Reich's going to do to change some things up during you know OT yeah. mini camps, training camp to get us out of that week one slump. I recall. And, you know. Whatever they did, it didn't work. <laughs> well, might be another question for Chris this, this year at training camp. Oh, and by the way, yes, we are getting another interview with Chris. Uh, it's just, it's been pushed back this year. Um, and we're actually going to hold an interview, an in-person interview with him at training camp. As oh. it sits right now. Now everything can change. You know how busy that man is and. You know, but, you know, he does care about us. He does care about the fan base, um, loves the loves the anvil. So he, he will get on, but we'll get there. I mean, Anyways, we yeah. won. Why do I think we're going to beat the Jags? Jesus Christ. One, they did improve their offense. I will give them that. But they did nothing in the in, so far in this offseason to improve their defense. Uh, they their defense up, was already good. Yeah, their defense was okay. It wasn't mm-hmm. great. It wasn't good. To me, yeah. it was just it was okay. okay. That's the way I see it. So, but you know, they did pick up a couple of D linemen, but they're you know, low level D linemen. You know, nothing, you know, that stands out to me that's like, damn, that, that dude's gonna be a, a game wrecker. Didn't didn't see none of that. And I, I don't see it. Uh their offense is good, but now that we've got the pieces that we've got, everybody on our side. And I'm going to be saying this a lot tonight going over these games and why I I think we're winning versus we're losing. But we have a renewed enthusiasm on our defense because of our quarterback. And, Clyde, you you made mention of that. Uh, Shaquille Leonard, Kenny Moore, and I think it was somebody else at the facility uh, either doing physical training, big growth. Uh, They stopped their physical – training and their rehab to watch Anthony Richardson facts. And they're all talking about him from JT down, you know? So to me, that's going to be the, the difference. Uh, Anthony has renewed a lot of enthusiasm on our team. And you're going to hear me talk about this a lot going through the schedule and why we can beat that. Cause we've had the, we've had a solid foundation team, but in our key spots, especially in offense, We've been struggling, and I think those struggles are still going to continue, but only because they're rookies, not because they're old and can't do it. It's because the rookies are young and learning how to do it. But I think they're going to learn fast. I'm going to take a different approach. Uh, I will say I like what you have uh, put into that uh, breakdown, but I rarely go mono e mono because I mean I'm just not a sports reporter in that. I look at how we've played teams over the years and how we're going to play them in the future, and all that's great. But in all honesty, sometimes it's just you have to have the will to win, and I'm not going to be you. Out of all the teams that have been a thorn in our side, you can count Jacksonville right up there at the highest of the high. Again, that's we have thorn. Or we haven't the beat them. Thorn. We haven't beat them in eight years down in Jacksonville, and that's a division opponent. Now, some people might overlook the fact that they also have not beat us, and here's where I'm going with this, in Indy in five years, going into six years. And so that's why if you look at my schedule, because it's it's up there, we win (laughs) at home, and you know what? Damn it, we probably might lose again down there. So that's just a will game. So I think we continue with that, and it helps us get off the snide. We are finally off of the week one. We can't win. So that's why I'm going with that. But great breakdown. I like it. I like it. 
And then we don't know what a casa say, so we'll just cheers to a W. So cheers to a W. <laughs> All right, week two. Cheers to getting drunk and sunburned. Oh, my goodness. But uh, the Anvil tailgate week one to kick the season off, I'm already going to put it out there. It's going to be crazy. So show up. Nuts. So before, matter of fact, see, I forgot about my people. All right, so looking at Colts Wire, what they said, they got us losing. 21-17 because they say it's going to be a struggle. First game, rookie jitters, blah, 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 blah. So they have us 0-1. We all are 1-0. Moving on to week two at the Texans. All right, Pat, so I know you talked about potentially coming down here. Uh, Not I, potentially. It's locked in. Okay. Well, I won't be here because I'll be in training that will have me in Ohio, of all places. So I'll be watching that game on TV. But – while we're talking about it, why do we beat the Texans? For a lot of the same reasons we talked about with the Jaguars, the renewed enthusiasm. On top of that, the Texans are not going to be ready to handle us. <laughs> they're just they're just not. Based off of what? <laughs> All the the rookie studs that they have. Week two against our defense. Come on, you know a rookie. Correct QB me if I'm wrong. They beat us to end the season, right? Barely. <laughs> and we let them beat us. We let. Then you have to wear. So you have to show up in Houston. No, you wore Houston. Wait, what did you have to do? I lost a bet. Oh, you lost a bet. That would have nothing the, to do with the game. With the Texan duos, because we yes. was doing a, a, a yes. Christmas charity drive, and right. whatever so fan base, the game in a whatever, jersey. yeah, whatever fan base lost had to wear the opposing team's jersey. Well, so be it. I lost, and I had to wear their jersey. <laughs> and um, Sammy, I don't know if you'll be able to do this, but if you want to poke fun at me, pull up the Texans website, and you're going to see that picture of me wearing that jet. Uh, Texans jersey on their friggin' website. It's hilarious because he made Patrick actually made Sports Center. Sammy, I'll send like, I'll send it to you. <laughs> if you want to put it up, it's great. I love it. They said talk about being confused. That Pat had on a gigantic Texas jer or jersey with a Colts hat. It was amazing. And he made our our own very own Patrick was on Sports Center and Dan Patrick was giving him the business. That's pretty cool. But anyway. So no, you said not. you're saying they're not ready for us. Okay, I don't know. What no, they're not. They're just they're they're too young, too inexperienced. Okay. That they're they're just not going to be physically and mentally ready for us. We're just going to outplay them. All right. Well, I'll take a different approach. Again, like I said, it's it's rarely did I go. You know, uh, this position versus that position. We're better here. We're better that. Maybe, maybe not. But I will say. This game is important because this is the Bro Bowl number one. When I what I mean by Bro Bowl, CJ Stroud versus Anthony Richardson. They became super close over that whole you know draft process, the combine, uh, just watching each other, uh, talking to each other, uh, being happy and supportive of each other. And lo and behold, they're both in the same division, and it's the first time they get to play. And I just think Anthony Richardson wants this. You know, I mean, I'm not saying that CJ doesn't, but I think Anthony's going to want this because the first thing he said is he loves to prove people wrong. And he has been listening to all the things that are out there that are doubtful. He's too young, not enough experience. He's raw, blah, 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 blah. And oh, by the way, to include myself, he's playing against the guy that most Colts fans saw coming to Indy. So what better game than to show out and say, hey, you got the right guy, and that guy is me. So I'm picking this game based on the Bro Bowl and how many times they're going to do this over the next, hopefully, longevity of their career. This is going to be great. Um, it's going to be great. So I'm excited for that. So all of us have them 2-0 and and going to Coltwire. Guess what? We lose, and they, <laughs> they say we lose based off of the opposite of what I said. It's the first battle between many, and C.J. Stroud is clearly the better pick right now. So we lose by one point in their position. Okay, week three. 
We're rolling into Baltimore, and this is the first road game that I will be at for the season. So, you know, I always travel to a couple roadies, and this is the first one. And um, I missed it a couple years ago because I was deployed. And if you remember that game, that's when we still had Carson Wentz. That was an incredible game, and the Colts end up losing in overtime. <sighs> so we get to go back up to m and Bank and try to defend that loss. And unfortunately, all of us have this as a loss. <laughs> we do. Uh, we do. I'll okay. start this one, okay? I'll okay. start this one. Okay. So, again, now, we all know that Anthony Richardson's nickname and maybe who he watched growing up, you know, the Cam Newtons of the world, the Lamar Jacksons, and he then self-named himself Cam Jackson. Well, for the reasons similar to the last one against C.J. Stroud, this is not the Bro Bowl, but this is like, oh, man, look across the way. I'm playing against somebody that I have idolized, maybe mock my game after. Maybe, just maybe right now, the stage is too much Ah, And I think this is the game where there's some rookie jitters. Okay. Uh, I think this game, you know, Anthony might have a couple, a couple lousy throws that turn into picks. He might try to do too much and, you know, there's a strip fumble things like that. Uh, he's just wanting to win this game so bad because he's playing against somebody that he's looked up to and watched play that maybe it just slips away from him. So I don't have us getting beat bad, but I think we lose this as our first loss. And they have it, Colts Wire, 24-20, a loss as well. But, Pat, you tell me why you believe we lose to the Ravens. Um, we're just going to lose to them because, like the Texans not being ready for us, we're not going to be ready for the – Ravens. Gotcha. We're, 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 we're gaining traction. I don't think it's going to be because of what you said. I don't, I just don't see Anthony Richardson having these jitters that everybody keeps talking about and, and having, Oh, he, he's a project and he needs time. He needs reps uh, from everything that I'm seeing from rookie mini camp to now. Man, the kid is just having fun. He does. Gotcha. He's got a. He's got a big smile on his face. He's happy to be there. He's ready to play. That does not tell me that he's a rookie that has jitters, or he has, he's a rookie that you know isn't going to be prepared week one. You know, so I I just don't see that. But as an overall, I see. Baltimore just being too strong for us right now, especially week three. Now, if we was talking week 13, week 14, week 15, that's good. That would have me changing my mind on this game because we're going to have a lot more reps under everybody's belt there. The coach is going to be settled. He's going to know more about Anthony seeing him and, and live action games saying, okay, well, I thought I could do this with him. Um, but that turned out horrible. Let's try this. By those week 13 and on, he's going to see and know everything that he can do with Anthony. Okay. So, Well, Acosta, what do you think? Oh, yeah, that's right. Moving on. <laughs> week four. Uh, the Rams. And surprisingly, this is the first win that Colts Wire have us um, scoring in our favor. And with that, uh, one of the things that happens in this game, uh, ironically, is uh, Anthony Richardson shows off his dual threat talent by going over 100 rushing yards, um, even though we're playing one of the probably greatest defensive tackles ever. Now, remember last time we played the Rams, we played them tough. That was Carson Wentz year. Uh, we should have won that game and went to OT. Uh, Carson's ankles were jacked. We put in Jacob Eason. No, 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 that wasn't a Jacob Eason game. But we should have beat – basically, we should have beat the Rams. And then the Rams, we just lost that close. One. It wasn't Seattle when uh, Eason came in? Seattle or, or the Titans or something. Yeah, it was, Seattle. It was Seattle. I think it was Seattle because, uh, yeah, the, the Titans game is when Carson went through that crazy interception in OT when JT was right there for the dump off, but he tried to go deep. And, yeah, anyway. Sticking on task. But again, I'm not kind of compared to a two year ago team to this team. Uh, but the Rams have lost a lot. And 
they're not as strong as they once were. And they still have, you know, key players, um, the Donalds of the world, the Cups of the world, hell, even Matthew Stafford, he probably still got something to tank, but they are kind of shallow everywhere. And those are the guys that said F those picks and they bet on there now and their future has been kind of bleak since. So I just think that we can pull this one out just because I think we're deeper in the, in, in the tooth when it comes to a complete team than the Rams are right now. Uh, even though they have some stars on their team. So that's why I went that way. You have this as a loss. Tell me why, P. I I do. It, to me, it's it almost feels like one of those trap games because I see everything you're saying. And by paper, we should beat them guys because they did get depleted. Jalen Ramsey's gone. You know, um, shit, half their, half their cornerbacks are gone. You right. know, now granted Matthew Stafford's coming back. They still got Cooper Cup. They still have a an a really nice O line. It just when I seen that game, I'm like, yeah, we should beat these guys, but I just felt like we weren't. Don't I, I don't I I don't it was one of the that was a gut feeling trap game, if you will. Gotcha. Okay, so currently we are sitting at in my book three and one. Pat has us at two and two now, and Acosta has us at three and one as well. And oh my god, week five at home against the rivals. Sick team in the background. We're sorry. <laughs> But we those, got to do this. Those dirty right. damn Titans. Uh-huh. Omaha them. Yeah, see, I could, I could barely hear that, too. You, What is wrong with your ears? And my ears are fine. You're, you Turn your volume up. No, you have one of them off of your ear. Because if I don't, I scream because I can't hear myself. So you can't hear. I can hear just fine out of one. Okay. Well, all right. Cool. So I'll put two on, and it'll still be the same. Go ahead. Same. Well, I'm sure everybody heard it, but you. But anywho, oh, what we'll say in week five, okay, is that we beat the Titans because we just don't like them. <laughs> I'm tired of losing to them. That's that's it. I, that, I don't, that's I why we like beating. them, and and I'm tired of losing to them. And I don't know if I, what I'm gonna do if I lose him again. They swept us last year, and I can't. I cannot continue this. Right, and we went so many years of just beating them with ease, Andrew Luck years, to now losing so many close games, and then also being dominated in games by by Derek Henry. I just can't take it anymore. So there's no rhyme to reason besides I'm just tired of losing. Them. Win for the Colts, shit, Pat. We, <laughs> hey, I I'm right there, but in my opinion, it's the players that are saying that. It's the players who are saying, hell no, no more. That's it. I'm not listening to the Titans fan space. I'm not listening to the Titans players. They're done. Okay. The, the, the players actually take take this one personal. Actually, more personal than the Jags. <coughs> well, there we go. Okay. And Acosta also has this as a win. So, clean sweep. However, Colts wire. Mm, guess what? We're one and four. <laughs> we lose 23-21, and it's because Derrick Henry still terrorizes us. But I honestly believe a healthy Jonathan Taylor and a much much improved line, we get this done pretty <coughs> easy, in my opinion. I do, too. Just that and, and Will Levis is going to have the starting job by then. No. I'm telling you right now, he could come out week one and be their starter. Thirty-five million to type that Tannehill's getting this year? Hell no! Tannehill's gonna play until the ship is sunk. <laughs> the ship is sunk under that that loser. Okay, maybe, but I'm still stating: if I'm paying somebody thirty-five million dollars, you have to almost make me not play you. Like I don't know what that looks like. I don't know what you have to do, but for thirty-five million dollars, <coughs> you're out there. I, I tell you what it is: their coach is a what two, three-time Super Bowl champion. He's tired of losing. Okay, well, whatever. I don't care. But <laughs> that's that's why he'll spend the thirty five million to, to bench Tannehill. Interesting. Right, He's tired see. of losing. And but when Levis does start playing, there's a lot of holes in the game. All right. Well, there we go. 
Week five is a Titans W for us. All right, week six. I already told you about this in week one. I don't believe in curses, but until they show me, and I think a lot of this comes to the point that I went to the last last year was the first time I've ever gone to a Jacksonville game. And I was super pumped. I was super excited. And uh, we went down to Duval and we got our asses handed to us. We got absolutely wrecked down there. Now, again, we would go on to win the second matchup because that was week two last last year. So when they came to Indy, we beat them. But it's something about that place. Like, I don't know. It's not as like it's it's not like it's crazy loud. It's not Kansas City. I've been I've been to Kansas City for a Colts game. You know, what I mean, it, it's not another. Uh, I've never been to Foxborough, but I would imagine it's not similar to Foxborough. I just don't know. But being down there, like, dude, I don't know. We shit just wasn't together. <laughs> so that's a lot of stuff that you have to overcome. And it's probably all mental. But until they show me that they can overcome that, then I'm always going to maybe have this as a loss down there. It's just got that type of hold on us right now. So that's why I have week six in Jacksonville as a loss. And I'll say this really quick before I pass it to you. Uh, shout out to our guy, uh, uh, Dan. Um, Dan, the man, he is a huge, huge Anvil supporter. So we appreciate that, him and his entire family, um, Darletta and Rebecca and everyone else. But uh, he had mentioned on our on our Facebook page, like he's not a fan of all of these divisional games being up front like they are, right? So, um, and I have to say, you know, four or six early on, I, when I seen it, I was like, oh, that's interesting because we had something similar last year. But then I'm like, you know what? You're playing for the division first, right? Yeah. And that's what that's what every like that's the I don't want to say that's the 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 baseline, but the stepping stone for every team first is to win your division. So what better way than to get into divisional games right away? Like I agree with that. You know what I'm saying? Um, so for me, you know, I'm a supporter of this uh, because that's what it's going to really come down to. Yes, all wins count. Yes, all losses count. But you got to sh- prove that you can win your division. And so if you can win those games, I think just by nature of the beast, you'll probably pick up a few more and then, boom, you secure your playoff spot. And, oh, by the way, because you're a division winner, you also secure a home playoff spot. You know, sometimes that's not fair. It really isn't. Like last year, San Diego had to come out here, go to – or not come out here, but go to Jacksonville. And ultimately they were winning that game big, then they lost that game. And I can say that probably home field advantage has something to do with that, helping the Jags get back into that game. So – Yes, let's play these games early. Yes, let's start to figure out what the division looks like versus being five and one, six and zero, oh, and then having your first divisional game. And then, oh, by the way, it's the Jaguars, and I'm using this for for past history. They're terrible, and then you lose to them, and then nothing makes sense. <laughs> like, how do we just go six and zero oh against the entire NFL, and then we played our first divisional game against a team that's really not good? I'm not saying the Jags aren't good, but I'm just using them for reference over the past decade, and then you lose them. Because we've been in that position, like, like how? Why can't multiple we? times? Multiple times. So that's kind of where I'm coming from. So let's just get it out the way. My thought process. So that's my answer to what Dan had mentioned on our Facebook page. At first, I had similar thoughts as Daniel. I'm like, damn, again. Yeah. You know, can't these sons of bitches that doing the schedule let us get ramped up a little bit before <laughs> they throw us into the divisional playoffs? But then I started well, looking at it and. I started thinking like you. If we don't have time to get ramped up, they don't have time to get ramped up. So somebody got to do it. Hopefully, our talent and our coaching is just better, and 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 we win those games. And on top of that, I got I got this as a win for Jaguars. I'll just lead into that since we're off the what? four out of the six division games um but i have us beaten jacksonville in jacksonville okay for the for the same reasons as we're not losing to the texans or the titans again our players are just our players are just tired of it tired of it they're just tired of it and they refuse to let that shit happen anymore (laughs) say it with your chest pat (laughs) said it baby i ain't taking it back all right, so here we go. Uh, roll into week seven against the Browns at home, right? Well, this is still an Indy, but uh, yeah, I think the Browns are one of those teams that are much better than how they've shown. I mean, Deshaun Watson still trying to get his feet underneath. 
they have a hell of a running game. They have a hell of an offensive line. Um, they have some weapons in the past game. They just added uh, some monsters to their defense. Um, yeah, the Cleveland Browns should be a much stronger team. And I think that we are just going to match up in a way right now because of the age of our team and maybe just come some of the positions. I know I don't usually go mano y mano, like I said. I'm not trying to contradict myself. But I just think that, uh, you know, Deshaun Watson is very familiar with playing in Indy. That's not something that um, – he that's going to you know deter him and like I said, bro, we have to be locked in to stop <laughs> their rushing attack, man. I mean, they have some 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 good guys down there, and uh, though we have our own, I just think that Cleveland probably has a better, well-rounded overall team than we do. So that's a loss for me. And that was the reason I have them down as a loss, just because they are more well-rounded than we are right now. True. Now it, it could be, you know, by week one, week two, we got all our shit together and we're going to be tough as hell to beat, which, and I, I think every game that we have losses up there, we're going to be competitive. I yeah. don't believe it's going to be a walk in the park for anybody to beat us. Uh, but the Browns defense is really good. Their yeah. offense is really coming around. Yeah. Uh, if, uh Deshaun had a full season underneath him. They would have done a lot better last year. So he'll now he's got he's he's got a few games from last season. He's got all off season working with the guys. He's going to have six games coming into this game under his belt. He's going to be back in form. And Deshaun is tough to beat. This is true. You know, not talking. You know, their running game is monstrous. Absolutely. But now that you get you got Deshaun in there too, just like what we talked about as far as RPOs with JT and Anthony, they've had that. They know how to work it. You know, our coaching staff is just now starting to open the playbook to these guys and figure out their their strengths, their weaknesses. So that to me is going to be the difference. So I forgot to update the last one. So uh, Colts Wire actually had us beaten. Uh, the Jags and Duval just because they call it a curse and we're breaking it. And they also have us win back to back with us winning this game in a, in a close one, us winning this game 2017. Um, so currently they have us three and four. I have us what five and two. No, I'm sorry. I have us four, four and three. three and you have us four and three. All right. Acosta has us six and one. Yep. Acosta. Why did you choose that? Never mind. Okay. Well, uh, week eight, the Saints, simply put, um, the Saints are sort of starting all over. Yes, they got De- Derek Carr, but uh, we've played Derek Carr like three of the last four years. We know how to play against Derek Carr, right? Um, they got some pieces that they're trying to put together. Of course, they have, you know, a lightning in the bottle and Kamara in the backfield. Um, hopefully Michael Thomas is back. He's just good for the NFL, so he's a solid receiver. Um, defense can kind of be. Uh-uh. But I think right now these are just two teams, Colts and Saints, that are trying to figure it out. And we got the home field advantage in this one. So I gave us that one for that for that reason. Well, well, about I've, I've always thought Carr was a mediocre quarterback. I'm not saying he's a bad quarterback, but he's not, he's not an upper-tier quarterback. I've never thought that of him. She's uh, bad. But we got a rookie. What they got to yeah. do anything? We got a rookie on our side. We got a rookie. Yeah, he's going to be a rookie all year long. You don't have to keep reminding me. Well, I'm just saying when you compare him against other people's quarterbacks, like you okay. kind of have a quit leg inter- to stand on. Quit interrupting. We'll quit interrupting me. Let me finish. <laughs> they got a mediocre quarterback. They're they're not a dumpster fire, but there's there's some ambers burning around that that dumpster for sure. Wow. Still, not only that, our defensive coordinator knows <laughs> everything he needs to know about Derek Carr. He's going to know how to stop that dude. Okay, Pat. We, we win this one easy. Okay. Uh, well, Colts Wire has us losing. <laughs> but all right. That's why I don't read the Colts Wire. Yes, I guess not. I just needed somebody to bump our thoughts against. Week nine. 
halfway through the season at the Panthers. Another huge game. Why? You're going against the number one pick in Bryce Young. And, oh, did you hear, Frank Wright is now the Carolina Panthers coach. So we're going against our previous coach who we fired midseason last year. Now, I talked about this on the podcast last year. Um, I don't get into the, you know, oh, let's win this one for Coach Wright because they fired him type stuff. You remember how Nick Sirianni uh, Don't get me started on that. You know, once they beat um, us last year in Indy. But uh, for this, I think there will be a lot of emotions. There will be a lot of, you know, congratulatory stuff. Like Frank was able to get a job right away. That's rare in the NFL that you get fired midseason and picked up right the next season. You just got to go back into the coordinator lane. But they saw enough of him to say, hey, come take our head job. So with that, you know, I feel like he's going to have something to prove. He's going to want to win this game, right? And I think we're going to want to win this game as well because (laughs) – Every since gone, draft, combine, whatever, you know, the top four guys, they got one, we got one. Let's put them together and see who's got the best one, right? And though it's going to take way more than one game to know that, this is the first time that they get to show that. So I think this is another Anthony Richardson takes a huge step because he's going against one of the guys that he was in the draft with and being marked down as far as this guy was more ready, NFL ready than him and so on and so forth. So maybe he gets a chance again to prove why we chose him. So I picked this game in our favor for that reason. How about you, Patrick? I'm going back to our defense. The Panthers are just not going to be strong enough offensively to outscore us. Our defense will hold them at bay. And they by have- way – By week nine, I guarantee you, Coach Steichen knows how to utilize his weapons. No, I'm saying they they definitely have lost a lot. You know, CMC last year in the trade, DJ Moore, uh, Kyle Anderson. uh, Is that his name? The receiver with the the sideshow bob here. He's in Miami now. Yeah. I I think his last name is Anderson. His last name is Anderson. I forget his name. Robbie. Robbie Anderson. Robbie Anderson, yeah. And they lost. (laughs) They they traded Christian McCaffrey last year. So, you know, so they they lost a lot because they knew they were rebuilding a lot of pieces. Okay. All right. So, moving into week 10. Oh, I guess I should say. Oh, matter of fact, they have us winning this game. So by Colts Wire, we're four and five. Um, by Pat's um, board, six and three. Six and three. And Colts, Clyde's board, six and three. And then Costa. Wow, buddy, eight and one. How did you get that? That's right. All night, you're going to get shots taken at you. Just when you watch this, we shot mm-hmm. at you all night, Acosta. Yeah, your fans are pissed you're not here. Which yeah, not all because you wanted the fire water. <laughs> Okay, now week 10. This is the second road game that I'm going to. And we didn't get no love for primetime game, but we got an international game. And Clyde and maybe Thomas from the Anvil as well are talking about making a trip to Germany to watch the boys lose. (laughs) I must have spent a lot of money. Oh, my God. Matter of fact, as I'm looking at this, I'm going to two row games that I've already marked, and I had us losing both. So that just shows that I am a fan, and I'm going to support the team. But we lose. Though we beat the Patriots last time we played them. No, we didn't. Did we play them last year? Didn't Sammy play that game? Ellinger played that game last year. We beat them two years ago. Oh, when JT did. broke loose. Yeah, but we went to Foxboro last year, and Sam Ellinger played, and we got smacked. So, yes, we lose not maybe in the same fashion, but I just feel like we Bill Belichick with a rookie quarterback, good luck. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, he'll scheme them, he'll scheme them up, and, I mean, Bill, until Bill Belichick steps away, you got to always look at him as a threat, despite the roster. So, yep. yeah, I just think he has our number, and we go all the way to Germany. To lose in Deutschland. What was your thoughts, Pat? Same, same. I, I don't know if a rookie quarterback has ever beaten Belichick. 
I'm sure, but yeah, it it, don't it, may, it might be out there, but I don't have the staff to do all the research, so <laughs> I'm just I'm just going to take a guess here on it. Uh, but yeah, he's he's really really tough on rookie quarterbacks. Big fact. He, you know, as much as I hate him, I'll give him credit because he is a mastermind, and he knows how to build a team. He knows how to stop an opponent. Yeah, and and, th- and that is just that's really 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 tough. Colts Wire also have us losing that game. All right. Sammy says Belichick's record against rookies is 21 and 6. Yeah, that's pretty good. Sammy, that's, what would we do without you? Let's clap uh, Sammy up. Uh, see, I get I get no sound. You're pushing buttons and I get nothing. Hmm. Interesting. At least the Omaha and the Anvil, I can hear a little bit. Hmm. You got nothing on that one? Maybe it's just a technical difficulty. We'll see. Maybe, on yeah, way. maybe it's just you. Whatever. But what I was about to say before you cut me off rudely, <laughs> a lot of people wonder why we made a switch. And no, we didn't make a switch. They made huge news like Pat McAfee and all that he's doing. Congratulations to his staff. Becoming yeah, absolutely. The face of ESPN in the fall. But we made the move that we had to make because sick team just makes us better. So Sammy and the entire team, Juliana, and hello, everyone else. Thank you for what you guys do for us. Absolutely. Came up with that that quick. Okay. So, hey, hey get, get them on camera if they're not scared. Losses across the board. We have there. Now, week 11, who do you have? Do we win week 11 or what, Pat? Uh, yes, that is a win. <laughs> and, and, and I'll tell you why. It's time to rest. Because <laughs> you're getting rest. <laughs> Ooh, Any, we'll anytime see. you rest and, and recuperate, you're winning. By week 11, especially after flying back from Germany on a loss that I have predicted, I probably look like Patrick. If this if this is not if it's not going the way I want it to, if we, if we're some ungodly, I don't know, shit, one and nine, two and eight, something crazy like that, I'm gonna look like that. <laughs> the hair so, or the skin? Oh my god! You know what? Week I can't 12. hear it anyway, so. <laughs> Roll into week 12. Okay, here we go. The Bucks come to town. And uh, the Bucks are in that rebuilding situation as well. I mean, they got, uh, what's his name? The, the, the Wiley Gunslinger down there now. Why can't I think of his name? Trash. No. Uh, Baker. Baker, there you go. Baker Mayfield uh, has been picked up down there. Now, will he be their starter? I don't know. Maybe it'll be Kyle Trask, but he's down there. Baker had a few good games last year in L.A., um, so Baker still showed that he could play a little bit. Uh, but they still have their receiving core, right? Um, so that's something to watch. Mike Evans and and the rest of those boys, uh, Chris Godwin and so on and so forth. So still have a solid offense. Defensive parts are still decent, you know. So I don't know. But I just think that, you know, we'll be able to take this one. It's not Brady showing up. We played Brady a couple of years ago, and Brady did Brady things. We had that game, probably won early, and Brady did Brady things. So it's not that. So I'm going to go us. Yeah, I look at the Buccaneers a lot like I look at the Rams. You know, they they spent a lot to win the one, and now it's all falling apart. And although I got us losing to the Rams – I got us winning against the Bucks. <laughs> what? I, I, well, I don't see. I didn't. I didn't get how you how you slinky dead together. But do yeah, your worst. I was. I'm doing my worst right now because I I lost my thought process. But with the Rams, they still have. To me, they still have the talent on on the roster that they could be a sneaky team <coughs> and beat us. That's why I called them you know, a trap game, even though, you know, they've lost this piece, lost that one, da, 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 where the, the bucks I'm about saying the exact same thing. I I just don't see them being a sneaky team that can beat us. Copy. And uh, Acosta also has that as a win. And when I look at uh, Colts wire, they also say we win. So on their books, we're five and six. Okay. Now, because you can't win them all, and sick team, I'm sorry we went so ham last time <laughs> in week five. 
you guys get your revenge. Something about playing in Nashville here lately, too. I don't know. The Music City, just not a place that we're so comfortable as we once were. So because our division is our division, and despite our division not being that great last year, it's still a division opponent, and we're probably going to split. And this is where the split begins. So that's why I have the Titans losing. Oh, I'm sorry. That's why I have us losing to the Titans in Tennessee in Week 13. Patrick? Hey, pretty much the same thing. Um, we typically will split, and the Titans aren't as bad as everybody thinks they are. You know, by week 13, Vrabel's going to have these guys playing damn good ball. Yeah. Acosta, and, what do you think? Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> he thinks he needs to go get some aloe lotion. <laughs> All right, so uh, next we roll into Cincy, another road game. And, yeah, Joe Burrow and his squad of goons. And when I say goons, I'm just talking about, like, these dudes are explosive. They go crazy in, in their passing game. And, hell, Mixon is no pushover either, and their defense is getting better. Yeah, I think we lose this one, and we lose it big. Coach Wire also had us losing, too. The Titans, so we're five and seven by their books. I got us losing. I don't know if we're going to lose big, um, but when I was looking at this game, looking at who they have, and uh, they're just more a complete team okay. all around than we are. Um, now that's not to say we won't be complete by week fourteen, you know. But just looking at it right now, it's a loss, but we're going to be competitive. Okay. Absolutely. I think I'm going to say this and I'm going to say this loosely because I don't want it to be, but if there's a bad, bad loss this year, it's that game. The Bengals are just, they have very possible in two and a half yeah, years. They, know, they, 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 have yeah, they figured it out. They figured yeah. it out for sure. So this is, if we, if we have a bad, bad loss this year, it happens right here. Okay. Uh, and then, oh my gosh. The Steelers, like, when the last time we beat them? Too many games to count that have been close. We should have won. Crazy pick six, uh, fumble here. Going all the way back to Peyton's days, definitely in Luck's days and every other quarterback in and after and around them. We just don't beat Pittsburgh no matter what. And this one's home, and it still won't matter. <laughs> so, yeah, unfortunately. And it, and. It, it, I got the loss on there for the same reason, Clyde. Just Tomlin just it. Tomlin just has our number. Yep. You know, it, it's just he's just one of those individuals. Fair enough. And when they got your number, they got your number. Yeah. You know, hopefully, hopefully the boys can scrap, fight, kick, claw, and and, and get us a win out of this. You know, and get a, get our mind thinking different about the Steelers. But and like you said earlier, until they do. I'm going to constantly believe Tomlin just has our number. Shout out to our sick team compadres. Still is crazy. And I forgot. Sorry, Titans. Talking Titans. So I um, would love to hear their takes on that. We have to watch to see how they break down um, that as well. We'll yeah, we need, to, we need to schedule some time with those guys. Maybe we'll go lab during the season. And we'll get yeah, that'd be fun. All right. Okay. So then we go down to Atlanta, the space shuttle. That's their new, like, crazy, you know, uh, uh, stadium. Just looks like something out of space. The Mercedes-Benz Dome, pretty cool. Um, and we win there. And I think that's just two young teams. You know, they got a, a young quarterback in, in, in Ritter. Uh, we have his running mate last year, Alec Pierce. They were Cincinnati Bearcats. Um, I think Anthony Richardson just proves that, hey, I'm the better athlete. I'm the better quarterback. And uh, he leads us to victory. Pretty straightforward down there. Also, Colts Wire. Oh, Colts Wire had us beaten the Steelers. Holy shit. So we're six and eight by their by their books. Okay. Week 16, Falcons, what you got? Yeah, I, I, a lot of the same lines as you. They're they're a young team like us, but I honestly I think we have a stronger foundational pieces throughout the team. They don't. So to me, that means we're going to get it together faster than they will with us both being a young team. 
You know, they got a young running quarterback. They they just picked up Robinson out of Texas. So yeah. they're and they still got um, uh, Cordell Patterson. You know, yeah. so that's going to be a scary backfield. But yeah. it's not just the backfield. Kyle Pitts is a man. No, I, no I think Kyle that... Pitts is not there no more. He was traded. Kyle Pitts? Yes. What are you talking about? The tight end? They just drafted him two years ago. You want to Omaha? You can't hear it. But you yeah, they, they traded him. They did not trade <laughs> Kyle Pitts. What is wrong with you? Anywho. But yeah, it, 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 it's, it's going to be a scary, scary backfield, absolutely. You're thinking I of just, Calvin Ridley, who's now a Jaguar. No, no, I'm not. Um, Whatever. But, yeah, I, I just think we'll have more put together than they're going to be. But yeah, they're they're, they're shaping up. <laughs> Shut up. But that yeah, they're shaping they're shaping up to be 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 a strong opponent in the next few years. No one cares. On that yeah. day, week sixteen, we beat them. All we, right, we beat them, and then yeah. we wrap up the season with two back to back home games. The Raiders come to town. I feel like we play the Raiders every year now. Right, it's getting crazy. Last year, I had the pleasure of going to the Raiders game. I was still stationed in Las Vegas. Me and my son took him to his first NFL game, and we watched JT run right at us for whatever that was, 68, 70 yards. It was amazing. Um, so we have had an up-and-down situation with the Raiders, right? Last year we beat them where it doesn't matter. Two years ago they come to Indy and beat us when it does matter for us because that was the first of the back-to-back -back losses that we had to end our season, which didn't get us into the playoffs. And then a couple of years ago, during the COVID year, we remember Kenny having that crazy one-hand interception. Um, so we've just went back and forth with the Raiders. Over the last five years, we've probably played four times, and I think we're eight, two and two. So um, they have Jimmy G now. Um, and to me, that's no scarier than having Derek Carr. And if we can beat him last year with the crazy put-together roster we had last year, and Matt Ryan can't be mobile. Though I don't like to compare mano a mano, I just think that we could beat them this year. Why not? You know, Anthony Richardson is a far much, far better athlete. Maybe not overall cerebral quarter, quarterback as Matt Ryan was, but athletic wise, he's not going to stand there and get dumped on all day. So I think we beat them just because when we match up, it's pretty solid. It's pretty much in our favor. My thoughts. Yeah. So. And, and if Jeff Saturday can beat, beat him. Shane Stein can <laughs> definitely beat him. I'll okay. just I'll just leave my coaching comparison for the win. Got it. Fuck Sammy Josh Daniels. <laughs> Fuck easy. Josh Daniels. All right, man. Easy Sorry. on the, easy, easy. I Sorry. It. Nobody likes it. Sammy, could you bring up our week 18 <laughs> special oh, moment for Patrick? <laughs> Let's see what this is about. Look at this guy. There it is. <laughs> I told you, I told you it it's on the free, I'm on the Texans website, you guys. Who are you cheering for? Are you cheering for I'm cheering for the Colts? They got you in big red too. I forgot you was in big red. I thought you I, I thought you wore white. I forgot you had the red jersey. Nope. Yeah, but you so see, I still I'm still wearing my Colts hat. And man, when he made Sports Center is amazing. He was like talking about being confused. <laughs> Who do you cheer for in this <laughs> awful game? <laughs> and that's why you guys anybody listening to this program we're going to do the charity challenge again and i don't care it's for kids so i wear just about anything if we're doing good stuff for kids you win yeah. but we're going to do it again but don't make me do this don't let me lose again <laughs> you guys if you got any love for the p-man do not let me lose this charity challenge again Okay. Please, I'm begging you. And with that, let's look at week 18. Against the Texans in Indy, I believe that we can get away with sweeping these guys. Because you know what? Absolutely. Anthony Richardson has that same feeling he had in week two. And it's not, hey, I win one, you win one. Nope. Like Kevin Hart said, I take a sip, you take a sip, we both take a sip. No. It's how many times can I beat you consecutively? <laughs> Over and over and over. Yep. And this is going to be one of those games. I love you, bro, but I'm becoming your daddy. Exactly. Like, hey, look, I mean, we're, 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 we are now competitors. We can be friends and buddies and all that, but we are here to compete. And so I believe that he will go out there and he will compete. And, uh, yeah, he'll beat 
CJ Stroud for the second time. I believe so too. Thoughts? I'm riding along with everything you just said there. Everything. All right. So I forgot Colts Wire had us losing to the Raiders. That made us seven and nine, and then it has us beating the Texans. So they have us eight and nine. And so before we get out of here, can we see um, the individuals just to see how we all lined them out? All right, cool. So Clyde has us 10 and seven. Now I want all you guys that are out there, you know, fans and supporters of this show, um, keep us honest now. All right, so screenshot this, take a snap. Uh, comment on our Facebook page and YouTube and let us know what you think. And, and not we'll only that, it, check them off as we go. If you want to get in the comments and give us your win loss predictions Absolutely. for the season, Do we'll that. get it and we'll keep receipts and we'll keep talking about it. Absolutely. All right. So that's Clyde's record. Who's next? Pat's record. Oh, he cheated off my paper. <laughs> Did you cheat off my paper? Well, I do have white privilege, so. Oh, my God. So I'm allowed to. Here, <laughs> as you see here, I think we have one game that switched with the overall same outcome. So, what we got? You got, I can't Game's remember. Hey, yeah, I seven. can't remember. Did Did you lose? You Oh, you you didn't lose to the Rams. I did not lose to the Rams. I did. Um, yeah. Who was who was your switch there? Uh, do you have us beaten the Browns? No. Who the hell was it? I don't know. Both Can you pull Clyde's record back up, please, Sammy? You did cheat off my paper. I did not Stop. cheat off your damn paper. Yeah. Okay, oh, week six, you got us losing to the Jaguars. Oh, the Jags, that's right. Yeah. We can't and I out. said we'll never lose until them again. Yeah, well, you get on for that. It doesn't okay. matter. It can't hear it. All right, and let's see uh, Costas just for kicks and giggles. 13 and 4. Wow. 13 and 4. Wish you were here to speak on it. <laughs> but with that said, uh, we're going to keep parting shots at you. But we're getting the hell out of here. Thank you for sticking around with the Ambles way when it comes to the, the schedule. No, we're not Big Grove and Defoe. They ate their way through the schedule, which is really cool. I mean, that was, that was really, cool. really cool. I really enjoyed that. Probably had belly aches and were. You know, full as hell, but man, to taste a little bit of the league. Now, got- I, I, I get, I get some uh, meet and greet time with Big Grove Sunday. Do you at the at the complex? Yeah, nice. Well, they're doing oh, the right. they're all doing the the the, the, in, the induction to the Hall of Fans, the photo shoot, and all that shit. Super and cool. I, me, my daughter, my granddaughter will be there. Yeah, put them out front. Okay, you absolutely. They're a lot prettier mom. than I am. <laughs> And with that, (laughs) Sammy, take us out of here. (laughs) And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the Sick Podcast and Bill Show on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts.